All right, this uh, set of videos is a 14 video series talking about difference equations. And here is the outline kind of overall for the video series. This is the introduction video. So we'll make some just kind of starting comments and work with uh, some simple difference equations. And then as we go forward, we'll talk about, you know, how do you iteratively solve a difference equation kind of numerically. We'll talking about solving difference equations under the special assumption of no input. That's what we call the zero input response. And then we'll build up to, you know, finding the impulse response from a difference equation, solving for the zero state response, and then finally what we call the total response, which is the uh, solution of a difference equation with a non-zero input and initial condition. So we're kind of starting the simplest case, doing things numerically or doing things for no input and building up to finally solving for the total response of a difference equation. In general, this uh, series of videos is concerned with time domain techniques. So everything we're doing here is analyzing uh, systems and signals in the time domain. And we're very much focused right now on difference equation representation and solving difference equations. As we keep going in the uh, subsequent videos, we'll start talking about you know the impulse response of a system, the important input-output relationship called the convolution sum, how we can characterize systems in the time domain from their impulse response. So talking about causal systems and stable systems, you know, things that we can look at in the time domain to help characterize systems. So that's kind of where we're at right now in the course. But for now, let's uh, talk about difference equations. So let's just first just look at a few examples. So right here, equation one, here is an example of a difference equation. Y of K equals A Y of K minus one plus F of K. So we call this a difference equation because we are representing the output of a discrete time linear time invariant system, which we usually denote as Y of K, as a kind of linear combination of time differences of other signals. So one of those signals is Y of K minus one. That is the output at the previous time. So I kind of think of the time now as time k. So at um, previous time, k minus 1 is what happened just one sample uh, in the past. The other signal that we see on here, f of k, some books use f of k as the input signal, some books use x of k, but that is the input to the system. So all of these equations right here are just kind of different equations or different examples of what we mean by a difference equation. And it's just a simple relationship that relates the current output with previous outputs to inputs and possibly previous inputs. So obviously f of k is the input right now at time k. f of k minus 1 is the input at the previous time k minus 1. Notice these are also, you know, equalities. These are equations. So this relationship between the input and output and previous, you know, versions of an input and output has to hold for all time k. And that's an important thing. You know, this, this time index k, this is true for all k. So no matter what k I plug in here, this relationship has to hold. And that really brings us to this next chart. And this is an operation that we often do. It's what I call time shifting a difference equation. So let's go ahead and look at just that one uh, difference equation we had on the previous chart. Y of k equals uh, a of y k minus 1 plus f of k. This is true for all time k. So sometimes what we like to do is we like to shift this equation around. For instance, if I just kind of algebraically replace every single k with k plus 2, what happens? Well, I replace that k with k plus 2. And then right here, if I replace k with k plus 2, I have k plus 2 minus 1 is k plus 1. And then replace that k with k plus 2. This simplifies to this equation right here. This equation is the exact same equation. Nothing has changed. I've just kind of shifted things on the time axis by some amount. But they're still fundamentally the exact same difference equation. So it's kind of interesting, if I give you a difference equation, since that is true for all k, and this is completely equivalent, really for any difference equation, there's kind of this infinite number of difference equations that I could write down that are all equivalent. Because of that, we like to talk about some very specific forms of difference equations. One of those is what we call the advance operator form. When I write a difference equation in the advance operator form, I always write it like this. And like this means I like to have y of k plus a number all the way down to 
y of k's. So I always kind of have kind of the largest k plus 5, k plus 4, k plus 3, k plus 2, 1, all the way down to y of k. That's how I like to write it when I write it in the advanced operator form. Same thing on the other side of the equation. Everything over here is f of k plus a number all the way down to f of k. This number here, n, is an important number because that really indicates kind of the, the memory of the system, how many um, kind of memory storage devices are there. And that's what we call the order of the system. So kind of that largest shift that you see is what we call the order of the system. Right now I've written it kind of generically. There's kind of an n here and an m here. But for most of the systems we deal with, we're going to have to have n greater than or equal to capital M for it to be a causal system. And most systems that we work with in the real world do tend to be causal systems. So from here on out, usually we'll assume that either this is at most n or something less than capital N. So this is one form that we have of a difference equation. The advanced operator form, we always write it with you know, large shifts down to the smallest shifts. And then these numbers here, which I didn't mention, these are, these are just scale factors. These are just constant numbers that are the weighting coefficients of each of the signals. On the left, we have the A's. So A's weight the uh, signal Y, and the B's weight the signal F, kind of the input signals. There's another form, though. If we take that uh, advanced operator form and we re replace K plus N with K, so we kind of subtract off a capital N from everything, I can write it in a different form, and that's what we call the delay operator form. So this looks very similar in terms of I have all the Y's on the left and all the input F's on the right, but it's all been shifted. So now I start at Y of K, and then I have K minus 1, K minus 2, K minus 3, all the way down to K minus capital N. So like I said, it's as if I've replaced K with K minus capital N. I've shifted it all down just like we did just a minute ago on our little example. So the same thing has happened here on the right side of the equation as well. I now have K, K minus 1, K minus 2, all the way down to K minus N. So in this form, now that we've kind of shifted everything down to where I have Y of K's and Y of K minus 1, 2, 3, etc., we call this the delay operator form. Again, in this form, one thing to, to notice is we make sure that we always have a coefficient of 1 here on y of k. If I was working with a difference equation that didn't have a 1 there, I would just divide this entire equation by whatever number I had there to force a 1 to be there, and then I would have it in the delay operator form. If you were going to work with this signal, notice kind of one thing that you would need to know. For instance, what if I wanted to know y of 0, so k equals 0? Well, that means I need to know y of minus 1 and y of minus 2 all the way down to y of minus n. So again, the uh, kind of the memory of the system, capital N, is important because it tells me how many initial conditions I would need to know if I wanted to solve this difference equation recursively. All right, let's go ahead and just do a uh, little example here. So let's say this is my difference equation. So there's the difference equation I have. And we are going to put this into delay operator form. So right now this is not in delay operator form and I want to make it, put it into delay operator form. So I don't like this k plus 3 here. I would like to have y of k, y of k minus 1, k minus 2, etc. So what I can do is I can just replace k with k minus 3. I want to kind of shift this down to k. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace every k with k minus 3. So k minus 3 plus 3 is just k k minus 3 plus 2 is k minus 1. If I replace this k with k minus 3, I get y of k minus 3. And then the same thing for these values of k is replace them with k minus 3, and I get k minus 1 here and k minus 2 here. It's not quite delay operator form, though, because I still have a 3 here, and I need a leading coefficient of 1. So if I divide both sides of this equation by 3, I will get y of k plus 4 thirds, because I divide everything by 3, plus 1 third equals uh, 9 over 3 is 3, and then a negative 3 over 3 is a negative 1. So this right here is my difference equation written in delay operator form. I can also kind of go ahead and kind of pick off what the coefficients are. This is what we called a2. a1 is actually um, 0. 
because there isn't a k minus 2 term. Here's k minus 1. There is no k minus 2. And then I go to k minus 3. Remember, this last value is what we called a0. So the one on the most negatively shifted y of k is what we called a of 0. So this is indeed a of 0 here. This is definitely a of 2. And there is no y of k minus 2 term, which means its coefficient must be 0. On the right side of the equation, b3 is equal to 0 because I don't have an f of k term. So it's kind of like there's a 0 times f of k. But that must be b2, and that must be b1. And again, b0 is equal to 0 again because there's also not a k minus 3 term. So that's one thing that's kind of uh, tricky for students sometimes. Make sure you get it in the right order. Compare it to our definition of the delay operator form. Any terms that you don't have means that those coefficients have to be 0. All right, so that's it for now. Just a very short introduction to what is a difference equation. It's just a relationship in the time domain between inputs and outputs, and then some very standard forms of difference equations. If I give you a difference equation, since we can shift it around to kind of any arbitrary starting point because this equation is good for all k, we like to talk about the delay operator form, which we did here, and the advance operator form. And being able to put a difference equation into one of those two forms is important because often we describe a difference equation simply by specifying these numbers. You just need to tell me a1, a0, a2, b1, b0, b2, and tell me the form, i.e. like the delay operator form, and I know how to just write down that equation um, from scratch just by knowing those coefficients. All right, that's it for now. In the next video, we will start talking about how we solve a difference equation. We'll start solving difference equations numerically using what we call an iterative approach.